Aaron, just given the stakes for tomorrow, what do you think the environment will be like here at Fenway? Amazing. Um, I think the, the last couple times we've been here, when we came here in the summer, uh, and then and then obviously last week, um, you know, there's a buzz here. Um, it's a, it, it matters here. Um, <clears throat> it's fun to compete in games here. It's tough to compete in games here. Um, yeah, I, I think it'll be some tension, electricity, <clears throat> you know, everything you could hope for for a you know winner take all game in the playoffs and two uh, two outstanding franchises and teams. Garrett Cole hasn't necessarily looked like himself the last few times out. In your mind, what does he need to do to start looking like like the guy we saw earlier in the season? I, I don't think it's far off at all. I think the stuff is there. Um, you know, I think going back going back to the Cleveland game where he struggled, I, I think he struggled way less than the line suggested. Um, I think in Toronto the other day, you know, they, they banged him for a couple home runs on, on a couple of just missed heaters. Um, so I think, I think everything's there for him to put it together tomorrow. Um, it's just about, you know, executing in the right quadrants against a good team. Uh, Dan and Marley. Aaron, do you have a lineup yet? No. No. Um, and you, you guys lost the first seven to Boston this year, and then uh, I think won six of the last six. Is that is there anything to that, to, to how you guys have played uh, better against them of late than you did earlier in the year? I mean, I think we're a better team and are playing better when we've when we've played them more recently. Um, and, and I think in those first, was it seven? Probably a handful of those were really competitive games that just you know kind of didn't go our way. Um, but I feel like a couple of those times, maybe we weren't playing at our best. Um, so I think part of that is us kind of righting the ship a little bit here, especially in the second half of the season, kind of after that post 4th of July. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's, we've seen that happen in the course of this rivalry over the years where, you know, you get hot for a little stretch against them or not. But I think uh, it'll be two really competitive teams. Marley, Aaron, as someone who is part of this rivalry as a as a member of the New York Yankees, how do you feel about the single game elimination wild card game, Yankees Red Sox? Well, if we win, I'll feel great about it. <laughs> um, look, I mean, it's probably not perfect this way, but. Um, you also, you know, live to be in these kind of competitive environments and with a ton on the line. And, you know, we feel like as a team, we've been playing for a while now with a lot of the line, certainly the last week and 10 days and two weeks, but even going back a couple of months. And now we are truly at the must win portion of the schedule, you know? So, you know, I was asked all weekend about, is this must win? Is, yeah, tomorrow's must win. Right, we got to win, or we're we're done. So, um, I, I think as a competitor, and that's what you sign up for, and you hope to be in these scenarios where you're playing a meaningful game to move on to something more special. So, uh, we'll embrace that. Look forward to tomorrow, and and I know we'll walk out there with a lot of confidence and expect to play well and and give it our best shot. Aaron, and when there was going to be a possibility of a four-way tie, you guys had picked uh, to play at Fenway Park, which I know had something to do also with avoiding the international travel. But now that this is going to happen, do you guys feel a little bit more, I know, better about yourselves and your odds in this ballpark because of what happened in the last series here? I, I, mean, I mean, I don't – look, I, you know, I, th I think one thing <clears> – <throat> When I've, whenever I've been asked about momentum in baseball, you know, I would never knew what to answer until 2003 coming over here and, uh, you know, being a part of that team, playing against a great Red Sox team. And I used to hear that all the time. Like, we'd win a game and we'd grab the momentum and then they'd beat the crap out of us the next day. And it's like, okay, I, I don't know what any of it means. I know... I think we're really a good team, and I th I know when we play well, we can beat anyone. So, um, and I think 
maybe partly having a good week last week maybe gives us a little added confidence coming in here like okay we we can do this um but you know had we lost two out of three here last week i i think we'd feel the same way frankly walking in here it's as i've said all along with with our guys even in the lowest moments i I do feel like there's been an underlying confidence with them and uh i I think we'll walk out on that field with that confidence expecting to to win tomorrow uh christy and brendan uh can you do you have an update on how Gio Urshela is doing and what your confidence level in him being able to play at his normal level tomorrow? Yeah, I think he's going to be good. Um, <clears throat> saw Gio, he was actually getting some treatment about an hour and a half ago or two hours ago back at the hotel and saw him at brunch this morning. And, uh, you know, he was a little stiff, but actually felt pretty good. And, you know, I, I think if there was a game today, he'd be playing. So I think he's going to be – fine um again i i think we got incredibly fortunate in that situation because as as you know from what i it scared it's really scared me watching him launch in there from my angle um so he, you know he might be a little stiff or whatever but I, I i don't think it'll have much impact brendan go ahead aaron i don't think we asked you last night is it a knee thigh Bruise? What yeah, is it more, for Gio? More he bruised his thigh. His qu- like he sl- that's where he slammed the most. He's got a little cut on his calf, shin area, but mostly just banged his thigh. And he went straight down the steps. Is that the only thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got – I mean, uh, I was expecting to go over and to a car accident and the jaws of life being out or something, you know. <laughs> Seriously. I, I mean, I was really, really nervous. And – uh you know, fortunately, obviously, he's able to walk off and stay in for a while. Kenny. Aaron, you've talked about, um, you know, you like it. If, if someone would walk into your clubhouse and look at you, you, you wouldn't want them to know whether you guys have won eight in a row or, or lost eight in a row. Do you think that comes from growing up in a baseball family, or is there some other influence that helps, gives you that um, serenity? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, a lot of times – you are who you are, and you're a product of what you grew up in, I guess. So uh, I'm sure that that is something that shaped me in that regard. Um, but so yeah, I've, I, you know, I think that's a good question actually that I well, haven't thought you. about, and I <laughs> um, that probably is something to that. Look, I just think it's <clears throat> a 162 game season. It's a grind. It's a game of failure. It's a game of you know even. You know, unlike other sports even, you know, the best teams, you know, win 60% of the time. And you've got to be able to deal with that. And, and you, see, you see teams, you see players, you see talented players that can't handle that, that go by the wayside. And so there's, there's a makeup quality there that I think you have to have as a club um, if you're going to kind of survive the inevitable grind of the major league season. And a similar vein, the fact that you had a dad who did the job you're doing and yeah. was fired twice yeah. uh, allows you to not worry about your, you know, your status here. I mean, you, yeah. you, know, you know, you know, it's a, a it's a talking point in, in what's going on around this this team. Right. Um, yeah. I I really don't. So. Does that you think the fact that your dad did it make influences that? Comment? I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure my faith has something to do with it. My family, you know, this is my livelihood. This has been a huge part of my life. I love it. It means a lot to me. But in the end, it's not everything. Pete Caldera, and all the way in the back. Yeah, Aaron, as, uh, as, as you go back constructing a lineup for tomorrow, uh, is Glaber Torres locked into that leadoff spot, or might you consider Gardner or even Rizzo there? Um, I don't know yet. Um, it, it, I mean, as I sit here right now, I, I'm thinking probably Glaber, but you know, I'll sit and think about and and you know get with Mendy and the coaches tonight and see exactly the way I want to go. But uh, I think there's a good chance it'll be Glaber. 
And uh, w was there something that was changed in Luke Voigt's uh, condition that uh, he was put on the 60? No, it was more just probably the reality that he wasn't going to be in play for us um, and then giving us a little bit of flexibility there. Over here on the right, Brian and Lindsay in the front row. Hi, Aaron. Are you, are you keeping uh, Kyle Higashioka behind the plate with Gary Cole tomorrow? Yes. And so what does that mean for Gary? Is he your DH? Um, no, not necessarily. Again, we'll sit down and do that. But no, it means he's potentially a bat off the bench. But, you know, we'll talk through it and potentially DH. But no, probably, probably a bat off the bench. Okay. Lindsay. Aaron, you, you talked about the concept of momentum. And as a man who's known in this town as Aaron Effing Boone, do you believe in the concept of, of clutch hitting in a situation like that? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I do think there is – guys are more equipped to handle difficult and tougher situations. We probably overstate it at times, though, too. Um, you know, sometimes it is a product of a guy being locked in or – not locked in or, you know, just going through a, a tough stretch. Um, but I think there's no question that um, some people are more equipped to handle more difficult, more pressure-packed situations, more clutch situations. So while I think we probably take it a little far sometimes, I absolutely think it, it's, it's a real thing. Take two more, Ian, in the middle. Uh, Aaron, if, uh, if J.D. Martinez can't play tomorrow night, uh, yeah, how much of an impact do you think that would have on the Red Sox lineup? Well, I mean, obviously he's a great hitter. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, that's that's an important cog in there in a really good offense that, that wouldn't be available. Um, but, you know, they, they can also uh, mix and match other ways that, that make it difficult as well. So I would imagine he'd be in there, but... I don't know anything. Pete on the left. Aaron, as a guy who likes baseball, how much can you appreciate you know two All-Star starters pitching in a game like this? Uh, you know, two guys who know each you know know the teams they're facing very well and yeah. Um, I appreciate it a little bit. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's more. You know, uh, I'm more focused on our guys and and just making sure we're we're ready to go and have a good idea of what we want to do and, and just hopefully help our guys, you know, carry out our plan as best as possible. Um, you know, obviously Evo has been a, a really good pitcher here for them. And um, so it, it's, it's a great matchup. You know, it's two great teams, two historic great rivalry and two great pitchers matched up against one another. So um, I think it's a good thing for baseball. Um, but, you know, we'll be uber-focused on just, you know, making sure we go handle our business. Uh, we're going to take one more. James, to the right. Aaron, how's it going? Yeah. Um, just, I guess, two part, two related questions. Just what's it been like to, I guess, to be, like, back in a kind of more normal situation in the playoffs, whereas last year, as you know, all the different things you guys had to go through, a neutral site and, and in a bubble. But, and then secondly, what do you think of, like, the, the protocol so far? Would they be they're easier to handle than – than everything you went through last year, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I mean, last year, you know, last year was so challenging on, on so many fronts. Um, navig I mean, just learning as all of us were, learning on the fly, and it was tough. You know, I, I think the way I put it, it was a heavy year, you know, especially, you know, dealing with um, things that were going on in our country, pandemic, social issues. You know, it was just a, it was a h tough, hard you know, in a lot of ways, sad year. And, you know, we were fortunate to be able to get to play a season. Um, it was a privilege to do so, but it was hard. And, uh, you know, this year on, on, on that front's been, you know, way better. And, you know, I think we know how to handle it and survive in it and live in it, um, and, while also being way less restrictive than obviously last year. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think we're kind of con just conditioned to kind of handle it and deal with it now to where it's not too much of a distraction to what we're, we're trying to do, you know, between the lines.